Welcome back to Factorio. Now, before we get going with Flight 5, I have a few things that I need to change in the base. One thing that occurs to me is that several of the stuff, things that I've built are not set up correctly, and they've caused stalling in my production, which is kind of annoying. Like, I don't have any green chips at the moment, so I need to fix that. And I think in order to let myself know that this is happening, um, I need to set up some circuits. So let's build uh, constant accommodators. Um, we're going to make 50 of these. Then we're going to make something called um, programmable speaker. Now I'm going to set up uh, constant combinators to come in and then also programmable speakers because I want these always on me. There we go. So one of the things, I'll show you how this works. I'll show you how this works. We're going to set up a warning like right here. This is the green chip unloader. And I'm going to, let's see if I can find an old blueprint. Uh, vanilla. Here we go. Time to alert. That should do it. So the way this one works, uh, we have a signal called A, we have a signal called B. They're both set to 1. And this is, what it's doing is A is counting up how long this condition has been true. So in this case, I'm going to get rid of B equals 1, and I'm going to replace it with a wire that goes from here to here. And this is going to count the belt contents. And instead of B equals 1, we're going to say when when everything is greater is equal to 0. Well, okay, that's not true. Everything is not equal to 1. What, what, oh, what? I guess it's going to have to be green chips. So specifically green chips. Green chips is equal to zero. So this is going to count up, right? And as soon as a green chip gets put on this line, like, let's, uh, I don't have any. Um, as soon as a green chip gets put on this line, this should go back to zero because it's adding 1 to A only when this happens. So when, when, so A should go back to 1 as soon as a green chip shows up. When there's no green chips, A will count up. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, if 30 seconds have gone by, well, heck, 10 seconds. So there's 60 ticks per second, so 600. So if this is greater than 600, we want some kind of alarm to go off. And that's where this comes in. We'll hook up this to this. We'll say when A is greater than 600, that's 10 seconds, we're going to do an alarm. Not that alarm. Probably that one and quieter like this, and we're going to make it global, because I want to know about this wherever I happen to be. This is this is an alarm, and what it's going to do is we're also going to show the alert. We're going to show an alert called green chips. Um, green chips dead. <laughs> You see how cool that is? Now, I'm going to make it even quieter because I just don't want it to be obtrusive. I might even set it so that it... Um, conditions and A is 
less than so um, 10 seconds to a minute. So a minute it'd be 3600. We'll, we'll set this green, we'll set the output to a green. All right, so that's not counting at all. So that didn't work. Hmm, it work. Oh, here we go. So we're only outputting in red. And that makes the alarm go off. See what I'm trying to figure out is I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how to how do I make it shut itself off after it's gotten to be high enough. I got an idea. Well, I can give it a feedback loop. Do I have a feedback loop? Um, and a is less than. 3600. Mm. Mm. Well, that made it reset, but it's climbing again. So I would like it to continue to climb. So let's get rid of this. So we're going to test it here. We're going to do test A is greater than 600. Um, we're just going to we're going to output A is 1, which is the alarm. And then we're going to say, and then we're going to say A equals 1. And the alarm goes off. And then we're going to put an AND, A is less than 3600. So now the alarm will go silent after a minute. It starts after 10 seconds, goes silence after a minute. There, see? If I cut all this out and put it back. It should start from scratch in 10 seconds. Yep. And then if I'm anywhere in the universe and it should make an alert, I can hear it and I can mouse over it. It says green ship's dead. And I can click on this and it takes me straight to it, which is cool. It's very cool. Now that should, that should go silent after a minute. We're going to, we're going to see if that happens. And now we have to actually go fix the green chips, which is like, I don't even know what's wrong with it. So there are green chips. Um, call a train when we have 32,000, we have 14,000. So why, why are these not filling in? Because, because they're not going evenly. Oh, blast. All right, fine. Um, so these are not these are not flowing even remotely evenly on the output, which is bad. I might be able to do a quick fix by. Um, let's just see here. If I there we go. That gets it going. That should fix it. Of course, if these two are full and these two are empty, that's going to be a different story. And I might have this problem again. All right, so we got green ships flowing. I heard a train. Yep, here comes copper plates. Of course, if these are not even, then yeah, these outer ones are going to take a while to unload. That should make this creep up to 32,000. Oh gosh, it's got a ways to go, doesn't it? Well, I'll keep an eye on this. We should start thinking about some other alerts as well. 
that I might want to set up. So let's let's copy a blueprint of this. Shortage alert How about that. So let's go back to space and we've got some work to do. It's going to be uh, tough. <clears throat> I think my ship is just too small, to be honest. It's just too small. Um, let's get a whole bunch more width size into this ship. Uh, we'll make... Um, an extra three wide and probably a lot longer as well uh, it's, it's, it's just yeah this, this isn't really small <laughs> I think I'm, I'm thinking of redoing hmm, yeah redoing some stuff uh, what I need probably is to set up a blueprint book for certain space platform things It's, it's just time to gut the whole thing. There's, there's, there's quite a few things that were, that were wrong with that design and weren't working. So I think if I make the ship bigger, it might help. fuel that I've already made so I'm going to transfer that somewhere else um, while I'm working do I not have any more tanks I thought I brought more tanks uh. all right fine I will build one here we are Thank you. 
do I have, did I bring custom combinators? Please tell me I brought custom combinators. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> to make it bigger on the front as well. Um, now, uh, I want a clock circuit. And what this does, uh, this is just a simple clock that counts the ticks from 1 to 60. You know, once every second it will reset. And what we want to do is we can test for X being certain values to tell us what part of the second we're in. And um, we can use that when it comes to controlling the pumps to get us smoother. Because the last thing that I was doing in, you know, flights in the previous flights were... Um, I was using the velocity to uh, to cut off the fuel. Like if we're going faster than a certain amount, I'd cut off the fuel, which isn't really a good way to handle it. Um, this is a this is a much more uh, a much more finely controlled method. But uh, shit, I didn't mean to do that. There we go. Uh, so I've got to figure out, like, where, where do these pumps come in? No, oh, I can't have it there. That would work. Yeah, that could work. Oh, great. You can't take the... You can't unfill a tank or a, a thruster. Cool. All right. Well, that's not bad. That's that's a that's a and I got the I got these controlled over here. Now let's put that timer. What we what we want to do. So it spends the most most of its time it spends below fifty, right? So. The amount of time that it spends above 50 is very, very low. The amount of time that it spends above 10 is very high. Well, okay, or rather, a, a better way to put it is the amount of time it spends less than 10 is very low. So let's set the pump up. Oh, come on. Why does circuits have such a short range? There should be like a circuit extender. I can put a piece of belt down maybe, I guess. It's ugly, but... There we go. There we go. Now, if we say enable where X is less than... Less than or... Yeah, less than 10 then it's only going to be active, uh, you know, a sixth of the time. But in the beginning, we, what we want is, because I don't know how fast the pump is. So I need to set it really, really low, like, like two. That will just trickle it in, supposedly. Now we can test this out right now. 
with um, with the oxidizer. Now look at the oxidizer level going up. It's just creeping up, going up super slow. All right, that's good to see. Okay then. Um, another thing I want to do is I want to, uh, right. I don't have any lights or, I wonder if it would be better to send lamps or display panels. 10, uh, display panels. 10 tons each? Are you serious? Whereas I can fit a lot more lamps. All right, well, we'll put lamps on then. Probably. I'm pretty sure I'm not even making them. Ooh. So, we'll, we'll take maybe um, a few of these. Six. These can be good indicators for, you know, things being good on the rocket. Now, another thing that I realized that I may have done less than optimally on the last run was uh, how I processed uh, the asteroid chunks. I think I should... The asteroid chunks are pretty concentrated. And once you, once you process them, it bloats out the belt. So I think it's better to leave the belt with just the asteroid chunks on it and then process the other stuff um, directly into whatever's using it, if that makes sense. So what that means in practice is like we'll have um, a chemical plant, right? So the chemical plant makes... Um, chemical plant makes a thruster fuel like this from water and from carbon chunks so if it's if it's going to make it from carbon chunks what we want is we want a crusher directly connected to directly connected to it and that's going to be making carbon but it also makes, it has a chance of um, giving back what it just took, or what it just processed. So that's that's tricky. Um. Is it worth doing this, where we have multiple chemical plants making? fuel or whatever I mean maybe maybe this is this is tough stuff I haven't I haven't spent any time really thinking about this so I'm just kind of having to come up with it on the fly I guess it's I guess one of the big challenges I've got is I'm not used to working in this small a space I mean I'm, I'm used to building cramped but this is this is next level cramped, um, and I don't know if it's a good idea to spread out or what. It might be. It might be. Thinking of getting more solar panels as well. Here, let's see if I can drum up a few more good ones. Need more rare copper? Oh, well, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of rare copper. So that's. I wonder why it hasn't. Well, it says logistics storage 608. Oh, you know what? Because I need to request from Barker just Duh. And I need more rare steel. Let's check the steel. Nice. Okay, 
what's going on down here. Strange. Where did they go? I don't have them. Something requested them. Yeah. Oh, it, they might have gone. They might have actually gone to the to the rocket. Ta-da! Here they are. Right. 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 Oh man, this is challenging. Oh, you know what? I don't have enough. Um... Dang it, I didn't watch any uh, more chemical plants because I kind of could use those. Where's. Going to store some. I'm going to put some accumulators up there because um, power usage is intermittent, and I think we want to have uh, we want to have um, some buffering of energy. Really, not enough steel. I can't put it directly in here. Great. Wait, where did it go? Are you telling me it deletes it? Where did it go? Where does stuff go when it's sitting on the ground and I, and I right click on it? If I got asteroid chunks in here uh, and in here, it should process them. The excess can go to the other one. Um, question is, can I hmm, capacity ten? Oh yeah, they don't stack, so that's good to know. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't f input a new one unless the, the opposing, uh, yeah, I should do, I should have done this in a test environment, to be honest. I like designing in the test environment because then I don't have to, I'm not constantly limited by whatever I have on hand. So assuming, assuming that I have the main belt with all the chunks on it here. I'm, I'm going to run a belt, a line from here to here. And this is going to, and this is going to read the hand contents. Hold. And then this one's going to enable only when everything is equal to, z to zero. So if this is holding anything in its hand, this will not input, <clears throat> which means that this will get priority. 
And then I'll do the same thing for these two. So read hand contents and uh, enable when everything is zero. And then I'll do the same thing over here. Actually, wait. Whoa, that should work. That should work. I haven't used that technique before, but it should work. So that would be, um, that would be the production of fuel. Uh, we're going to need water. And we have water. Uh, do we have another another tank? Yes, we do. Right. So we need to get water into um, into this right here, this line. So we're going to put a pipe. Uh, a tank right here. That's where we want the water tank. And then we're going to make the water... It's too tight. It's just too tight. I've only got one chemical plant. steal again. All right. There we go. Now, this particular crusher will feed um, ice and only ice, right? Only ice. In, well, in, don't need a filter because this this can only take ice. So this will feed ice into here, and then. But we only want. Um, what are they called? Oxide asteroid chunk to go out, and it will give back. Well, technically, I should put that on this end. Give it back here, and then we'll take it right back in again. Um, theory. So this will this will constantly be giving a fresh supply of ice to this chemical plant, which will produce water. Um, now I should probably take the water water we've already got. There we go. So water is primed on all of these all these machines and then oh you know what? Can I can I check to see if green chips. Yay, they came. And let's see the status of that alert. So A equals one and A is just constantly one because there's green chips. 4,400 green chips. So hopefully next time these run out, if they ever run out, I will be notified. Right, so uh, next up, next up, and I just have this going all the time. So if it has no place to output, then it will pack up, which is fine. And then this will stop, which is fine. And this will stop giving it, which is fine. Great. That's That sounds like... Oh, hey. My other chemical plant is still here. Good. Okay, so I need it. I'm not actually sure one of these is enough. So... Mm. So now... We have to consider whether we have enough metal on hand 
um, for iron you know, smelting. So I, I think there needs to be a few electric ovens. How many electric ovens do I have? Electric furnace? Do I have two, which is not enough. Dang it. All right. There's four. What else do I need? Uh, maybe... I don't think I need any more tanks. I got a tank here. I don't think I need any more... Uh, maybe more inserters, probably. <laughs> Anything else? How am I doing on low density structures and motors? Do I need any more of those? I'm actually out. Out of low density structures. That's that's not good. I have a few motors, but not very many. All right, let's. I changed my mind. I don't want those in there. I want um, these, and then these. Probably these. Yeah, let's deliver that. All right. Well, you know, it's it's a lot more organized than before. I think it's this going to be a lot more functional, a lot more rapidly functional. Um, So we might have to start. Let's let's put some of these um, carbonic asteroid bits onto the <clears throat> onto this boat, uh, this uh, sushi belt. Okay, so where does it go? It goes there. It gets crushed, and it gets put into here, which gets processed rather quickly. I mean, well, you know, hey, speaking of quickly, we can speed things up a bit. Not sure how much that's needed. Uh, you know, another thing I could think, think about doing maybe is, uh, is, uh, efficiency. The green, the green circuits. Did I bring any of those up? Of course I didn't. Uh, so one of the one of them went over here. So they're both processing. That's cool. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Now, in theory, if I send the metal ones out, same thing will happen, but over here. The excess might get sent to this one. Or not. So that... That's, yeah, these are dedicated crushers. Before I was trying to do it too generically, and uh, it was just kind of messed up. And then we have the, um, this will back up eventually, but we, we also want, we want to make iron and steel plates on the ship. So, Best way to do that. Let's let's grab a um, asteroid collector. We just want the metal ones. So we're making another crusher. There it is. And this one's going to be for metal, for iron. And then wow. So 
really I need, well, what's this carbon used for? Hey, this carbon is used for thruster fuel and that's it. So I need to get that, that carbon out of here and into, into here. That's, that's easier said than done. Um, oh crap. You know, I don't like these things. I know they're important, but wow, that's annoying. Okay, so now that's all gone. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's it's a it's a fine line between challenging and tedious. Really, it is. And I'm sensing a little bit of tedious nature to this this system, the, the restrictions that the space platform gives. You telling me that there's no room to put? Yeah, figures. Here, that's what we'll do. Put this in there then. I don't care, just get rid of them. <laughs> okay, so the carbon is, is gone, and now we have the asteroid chest, which is fine. And what we want to do here is we want to... This is going to create iron ore specifically for smelting in this. It's a shame it can't fit here, but, you know, maybe it could. Maybe it could. Oh. Where would it go? That's the thing. Where would it go? So that's not that's not good. I'm struggling to find out uh you know, yeah, here. Let's the iron, the iron ore needs to get put onto a belt, a short belt, and taken into like a few furnaces. This is so challenging. Uh, maybe... Okay, let's just see what that looks like. So this, this will smelt the iron ore into iron plates. And stick them in the hub, which is growing. Um, well, here let's need more solars. Let's let's put more solars down. There, see. So, uh, oh wait, so this can't process because it it can't get rid of the no. Yeah, there we go. You know, can we can we stop these for a bit? Because I think I've got enough. No, that's not how I want to do it. Damn it. Uh, be a constant combinator. So we're going to set the amount of each of these that we want on hand. Really low to start with. Um, well, I 
think I got that down. Okay, so what this does, what this does is this sets a signal on the green channel for how many of each kind I want, which is two of each. And each of these makes a decision based on the input signals. And here's the input signals on the green channel. And here's the input signals on the red channels. We have nine on the belt. Nine is less than two. Nine, nine is not less than two. Therefore, we do not output that signal. However, when it comes to this kind of asteroid, there aren't any on the belt. So zero is less than two, and we output the signal. And the same goes through, same is true for this type. So that means, yeah, that means <laughs> circuits, I'm telling you, they're very powerful, but they can be maddening at times. Um, you know, I wonder if I should bring in radars. Because radars can transmit circuits any distance across your surface. <laughs> It might be better to do that than to have um, crazy wires here. Uh, okay, so now we're going to change this filter to this kind. And immediately this filter turns off. Look at all these iron plates. Oh my gosh. That's so much iron. That went quick. Okay. So really need to complete this circuit here. Let's... I need to get this red wire over to here. Boy. Okay, let's make some steel. Oh wow, I have no inserters. Well, let's send some more. What else, what else am I out of? Low density structures. Maybe another constant combinator or two. You know, some efficiency modules would be nice. Try them out and see how well they work. Energies of consumption minus 40%. Ooh. I need to make this whole thing a lot bigger on the front end. I'm pretty happy with the rear end here. It's it's looking like it's done right about just about right. You know, the um yeah, this is just for water. That's why that's why I'm constantly looking for it is because I keep put, I keep putting them in here so we have lots and lots of iron running around we, so we need we need the oxide ones s strictly for ice and water and that's handled we need the carbon ones strictly for fuel and that's handled so the only remaining ones to be handled is the metal ones for iron and that's for the the oxidizer here and that's handled but also for the creation of iron plates which is here and steel which is here but i don't need steel all the time
But with iron plates in the system, hmm. you yeah, see, I've got these. I've got these hooked up to only work if we're under three hundred, which we will be soon because I'm making steel. So we should see those kick in fairly quick. Uh, then these will start producing iron down here. There they go. And we're drawing a little accumulator power because that was a spike of power, right? Which is neat. Probably could use a lot more accumulators to be honest, but that worked. Did its job. So now we have to say, well, how much steel do we need? I don't know, but that should be enough for a while. We'll just let these run out now. Wait, this doesn't have any more asteroid chunks, so I can get rid of this. Um, next, we need to start thinking about ammo. And for that, it's going to be assemblers. Multiple assemblers. I'm, I'm fairly confident with this number of metal chunks going around that we'll be able to produce iron plates in a quick enough fashion. So what we need to do at this point is, uh, is make a, a belt. Wait, let's think about how this is best done. No, 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 stop it. This is going to have a filter on it that says just iron plates. And then that's going to go like over here somewhere. And let's pick these up because we don't, we don't need these here. Alrighty. These will be making ammo. Like that. And I hope to make it very, very quickly. So what we're going to do, at least for now, is we're going to speed it up as fast as possible. Now, the recipe for magazine, four iron plates, which means we do need a hell of a lot in storage. So I'm going to increase this from 300 to more like 1,000. There we go. We'll get some iron plates going. I wonder if I can get a, a long range. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Let's see if I can quickly get that wire down here. Here we go. Can I bring this up a bit, maybe? Well, this sucks. Not great, but it's what we got, right? Asteroid collectors. We've got four asteroid collectors. That's cool. Um, I should probably make a couple more, at least. Maybe even four more, right? Oh, 
Okay, okay. This is just one of my beefs with I don't know with the new interface. If I click on this inserter, what is this whole point of this left hand thing other than I keep thinking it's for filters. What is it doing? What is I've selected the inserter. Ghost cursor selection. What does that mean? No, I want so you gotta click this first, then this, then this. Oh wow, I'm out of belts. Uh, gonna need more belts. All right, let's get them sent. Need 100 belts? Oh wow, there it goes. Too late. I forgot it does that. If some, if one of the, um, if there's a need like this, um, if anything here is greater than, whoa, whoa why is that one? Um, it'll, it'll just launch. So, um, now let's think about what went wrong last time. What went wrong last time was that, first of all, there was too many turrets on the sides wasting shots. I'm thinking... More turrets in the center, because I mean, look at the range. Look at the range. See that range? That's the width of the ship, and it's not a very wide ship. But all I need is you know, a column of turrets. This might be super weird to do it this way, but it just may work. Uh, it's very strange looking, I agree, but uh, it's not going to waste shots. That's the thing. It's not going to waste them. Now, hmm. Asteroids never come in from other directions, do they? Because I don't have any turret coverage other than the front. Man, I hope not. Otherwise, I'll have to rethink all of this. Now... we build another two asteroid collectors? I think we should. Oh, you know what? Manufacturing is kind of screwed at the moment, isn't it? Okay. Well, hmm. There we go. Manufacturing. So let's make, let's make one of these uh, asteroid collectors or maybe two of them. And then we have to figure out how to get the um, materials down from there. Might have to move this. Oh yeah, well that actually works. <sighs> this is so funny. I don't even... Oh man, I've been going far too long. I'm going to have to do the flight in the next episode. Or, you know, I could I could just... I'll, I'll just do a test run. That way I can call this flight, what, five? So, I'll save. Save game. We have our new flight. Quite a few changes this time. Alright, we got three engines going. Oh, you know what? We need oxidizer. The efficiency is a hundred percent. 
And we are moving. We are actually moving. Very slowly. I'm, I'm super curious if going extra slow actually helps or not. Because man, that efficiency is a hundred. Right, let, let's 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 bring this up to like four. So now, now efficiency is dropping. It's at ninety-five percent. Oh, this works really well. It, it's a very steady ninety-five percent. And look at this thrust. What's our speed? Our speed is oh, our speed is actually pretty high. Ninety-five. Our speed is ninety-five, which means we're going to be hitting asteroids soon. Maybe I should slow down. Three. Okay, the speed is the efficiency is going up. It's at ninety-six, almost ninety-seven percent. We're firing on asteroids like pretty well here. It's not shooting at these, which is important. That's very, very handy. It's only shooting at the at the ones coming directly at the ship. Oh. Wow. Wow. And there, there's no sign of running low on ammo. None at all. And then it, and it hits these fragments. It, it, it creates the fragments that end up getting... Well, they're not getting collected. I should have a couple more collectors in the front. Let's check the power. How's the power doing? Oh, not very good. We're still doing excellent, excellent regarding ammo and bullets. And look at this, we're almost there. Almost there. Quite nearly there. Oops. I just want to make sure we stop, we actually stop when we get there. And the, the efficiency, man, it's like a 99%. This is insane. All right, we've stopped. We've stopped. We took no damage. We have no shortage of ammo. Everything's looking great. Although, there are still asteroids coming at us, though. That's that's an important thing to consider. Do they just keep coming forever? Like, a, if we're sitting here at Fulgora, do they just keep coming? I thought it was, I thought they only come when they're when you're traveling. Because if they come when you're not, oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Uh -uh. Um. Okay then. Guess what? I have to rethink some things. But I should be able to handle it. It's just a little. Uh. Oh yeah, damage. Oh look, it's getting repaired. It's automatically getting repaired. Hey, is that from. Yeah, it's using my repair packs. Well, that's cool. That's very cool. All right, so what have we learned from this flight? We've learned that going slow and having a column of turrets on the very front out of a skinny ship is a win. Now, I might make this slightly wider, just enough to get ammo belts around the whole thing, because guess what? We're going <sighs> to... We're going to need to put turrets all around the entire ship to protect against randos that come at... Like, here's some that's coming at us right here, right? Look at that. Yeah, this is going to... That's going to hurt. You got nothing to shoot at them. Well, they pass through each other, don't they? But they're not going to pass through me. They're going to hit. Pretty good imagery. Well, nothing actually got destroyed. And the repair packs are kind of handling it, so it's not like a super emergency. But still, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to deal with it using um using turrets. That's cool. I can handle it. It's not gonna take a lot. They don't come very fast. Anyway, 
that's it for this episode. That's it for this episode. So I'm going to, I'm going to just reload and then we'll make some changes and make another flight in the next one. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.